So a lot of you guys have questions about Miller v. Becerra, the trial that has been set for January, as well as some of the implications of this. So let's talk about this real quick. But real quick, before we jump in this video, if you think that California's ban on assault weapons violates the Second Amendment, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I want to give a shout out to one of the main sponsors of the channel, and that is Got Your Six. For just $2.99 a month, you get access to a lot of beneficial things on their app. This includes up-to-date local, state, and national legislative information, as well as you have the ability to create small and large groups on the app. One of the neat features is that there is this button called Initiate Freedom, so if your Second Amendment rights are ever violated through something like a red flag law, you can click this button and it sends out what is essentially an amber alert for firearms owners to those individuals in your small group. So it's a really neat app and if you'd be interested in picking it up, I'll put links down in the detail section in the comment section. So right now, everybody has Miller v. Becerra on their mind. Now, Miller v. Becerra deals with a challenge to California's assault weapons ban here in the state. If you're not familiar exactly with what this case deals with, you can watch one of these videos right here. I have a slew of videos that cover Miller v. Becerra, but just understand essentially what it is, is a challenge to California's Assault Weapons Control Act and is a challenge to California's ban on assault weapons or specific types of rifles and firearms in the state of California. So this week on Thursday, we got information that Judge Benitez did not grant the motion for preliminary injunction, but instead of doing that, pushed forward the trial and was targeting January 21st, 2021, to have a trial in this case. And since I put out my last video, I've been receiving a lot of questions and a lot of questions that just kept popping up one after another. So I thought I would address those and try to clarify as much as I can some of your guys' main questions on Miller v. Becerra that have now popped up because the trial has been moved. But first, I wanna give you guys a little bit more of an update that has popped up since I put out my last video. And this was sent out by Firearms Policy Coalition. I highly recommend you guys join or donate to Firearms Policy Coalition. I'll also put links down the detail section to them. But essentially what they put out on their Instagram page is that there's going to be a pre trial conference set for 12 16 2020 at 10 a.m. in courtroom 5A before Judge Roger T. Benitez. Then there is going to be a bench trial set for January 21st, 2021, 10 o'clock, courtroom 5A before Judge Roger T. Benitez. Pre trial briefs to be simultaneously exchanged and filed no later than November 5th, 2020. So those are the updates as far as now that the uh, case is actually going to be moving towards a trial in January, that is what we're looking at. And that update from Firearms Policy Coalition actually goes to answering one of the main questions that I've been getting asked recently. A lot of people keep asking me, who gets to decide who the jury is for this case when it goes to trial? Does the AG's office get to try to stack the jury against the California gun owners? Are they gonna to get to manipulate the jury selection in some way? And I understand not everybody deals with these types of issues, but what I just read to you guys in that update from Firearms Policy Coalition is that this is going to be a bench trial before Judge Roger T. Benitez. And for those of you who don't know what a bench trial is, what a bench trial is is essentially a trial before a judge where the judge is essentially the jury. You are only presenting your case to that judge and that judge is gonna decide the disposition of the case. This is opposed to trial by jury where a jury of peers or individuals within the jurisdiction are selected to decide the outcome of the case. Here, this is going to be a bench trial. So this is completely going to be in the hands of Judge Benitez. He is going to be the one who decides whether or not the Assault Weapons Control Act violates the Second Amendment or if it does not. The next major thing that was popping up a lot in my last video was in regards to, well, after the trial, can't the AG's office just go ahead and seek an appeal from the Ninth Circuit regardless? And yes, even though Judge Benitez has a final judgment in this case, the AG's office can still seek an appeal in the Ninth Circuit. But one of the interesting things with this trial getting pushed back one is that the appeal is not going to be on an interlocutory basis. So I've covered this in prior videos. An interlocutory appeal is a, an appeal like what we've seen in Duncan and in Rody. It is an appeal to a specific motion, the granting of the motion preliminary injunction in those two cases. When an appeal is going to be sought in Miller, what it's going to be is on the final judgment of Judge Benitez. It is not going to be an appeal on whether or not he appropriately granted a motion or not. It is going to be an appeal on whether or not his decision in the case was appropriate or not. And this leads to a bunch of different standards. One of the other caveats I want to bring to your attention that I also discussed a little bit in the last video is that we already have Rupp v. Becerra that's been heard by a three-judge panel in the Ninth Circuit and is currently pending a decision. What could also happen there is if the three judge panel rules in our favor, finds that the Assault Weapons Control Act violates the Second Amendment, en banc is sought, 
if it's pending on bonk, if the on bonk is denied, depending on what happens in the Ninth Circuit, that is really going to dictate what happens in Miller. Likely what's going to happen is the Ninth Circuit is going to take Miller v. Becerra up onto a Ninth Circuit three-judge panel, but it essentially put it on hold until final determination in Rupp v. Becerra. That is what potentially could happen. One of the last things I wanted to address came from people saying, well, what is the impact of this case, Miller v. Becerra? If this goes our way, what is the impact? And two of the main questions I've been getting were in regards to AR pistols and the other thing were um, specific makes and models or category one assault weapons here in the state of California under the Roberti Roos list. So first let's talk about AR pistols. Will Miller v. Becerra have an impact on AR pistols? Will it have an impact on fixed magazine rifle builds as well as another question that kept popping up. Miller v. Becerra is a comprehensive attack on California Penal Code 30515. And also what we saw in the motion for preliminary injunction was a challenge to the entirety of 30515, including subsections A and B. So like we saw in the motion for preliminary injunction, it covered not just uh, featureless rifles like we like to talk about a lot, but it also covered potentially um, AR pistol builds as well. So yes, Miller v. Becerra will impact those items as well. It is not limited just to rifles. Another thing I want to address was the Roberti Roos list or specific makes and models of firearms that are deemed assault weapons in California, also known as category one assault weapons. For the list of makes and models under the Roberti Roos list, you can find those in California Penal Code 30510 is what I believe it is. When you look at the complaint for Miller v. Becerra and you look for what the counts and prayers for relief of what this specific case is addressing, it does not cover the Roberti Roos list or those items listed in California Penal Code 30510. Miller v. Becerra is much more focused on those specific rifles listed in 30515 with those various uh, features which makes them of offending assault weapons in the state. So in looking at Miller v. Becerra, no, the Miller v. Becerra does not address those specific makes and models under the Roberti Roos list, and it will not impact those. To the contrary, though, Rupp v. Becerra, which is in the Ninth Circuit, does address the Roberti Roos list and is a much more comprehensive attack on the entirety of all categories of assault weapons under the Assault Weapons Control Act here in the state. And one of the last things I want to kind of address and kind of goes back to prior videos I've made and something we discussed already here talking about fixed mag bills. A lot of people are confused whether or not they'll be able to uh, remove the fixed mag mechanisms that they have on their semi-automatic centerfire rifles. Like I said, Miller v. Becerra is a comprehensive attack on Penal Code 30515. And so that would extend to that specific section that deals with having to have a fixed mag rifle with no more than a 10 round magazine in it. So yes, if Miller v. Becerra went our way, we got a favorable ruling and that ruling was upheld, it would impact those as well and potentially could lead to people being able to take those fixed magazine mechanisms off their rifles. So hopefully that helped clarify a lot of your guys' questions. Um, like I said, these were questions that kept popping up in my DMs in the comment section when I put out my last video. So I thought it was prudent to put out a video to kind of just get everybody up to speed get everybody on the same page and just help everybody understand the potential implications of January 21st, 2021 when Judge Benitez hears this case. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer them the best of my ability. Also I wanna thank one of the main supporters of the channel and that is USCCA. USCCA provides legal protection for patriots like me and you. And if you ever find yourself in a self-defense uh, shooting, like you have a CCW, I always recommend that you have some sort of legal protection. So if you'd be interested in that, I'll go ahead and put links down below to USCCA. So as always, thanks you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.